thank you. Um, it's great to be here this afternoon, and I am very glad that I have a chance to talk about the gene and the health. Uh, what about the gene? Um, let me see. What is the gene? The gene is a word that comes from Latin, which means uh, birth, origin, or race. So gene is a secret code that determines how we look, what we eat, and how our health is behavior. And what is a gene? Let's look at this. So take this look at like this is a cell. And in the cell, we got 23 pairs of chromosomes. And on the chromosome, we have our genes, which is a secret code embedded in this double helix. And the double helix consists of four different types of nucleotides. The nucleotides are called A, T, C, G. And it is the combination of these four nucleotides that made up of our genome. Sounds a little bit not clear. So if we think of our body, a human body, as a city, so what is a gene? Uh, if we take our body as a city, then our organs, our lungs, our heart, would be like a different community. And uh, the cell would be the building blocks of the community, just like maybe the auditorium here. And what's a gene? Gene is the blueprint that governs the way how we build the city, how we build our building. Then think about a complicated and the complex, such as our human body, the genes that governs the whole principle might be very uh, complex, I should say. Uh, yes, indeed. And for human genome, we have about three billion nucleotides, or three billion bases, we say. So what's that like? Uh, take an example. The, if we print out human genome in a book, um, let's say, in a A4 paper book and with 1,500, page, 1500 bases on each page. So take a guess how long the book would be. I don't know if any of you here would make a calculation. Uh, actually, the paper that would be stacking 107 meter, 170 meters high, which means it's about uh, 2 million pages. So I don't know how fast you guys read. Uh, if for me, I'm a slow reader. So it would take probably my whole life to read a book like this, which is uh, 50 years or 100 years. Since, as I said, the gene book is so long, and there might be so many information in the gene, and how can we understand it? We see here, there is a picture on the screen uh, there are two famous people here. I guess all of you here would know. Um, I want to ask a question. What struck you most from this picture? Can anyone say? Yes, I think the height. Although both of them are normal, healthy individuals, the height difference between them is so huge. It's because their genes are different. Why? Let's take a look at the background here. All these characteristics or disease-related characteristics are embedded in our genome, in our genes. And that's why they are different. And for example, between you and me, we have about 0.1% difference in our genome. And that determined everything. That is why everyone in the room is unique. So the genome's information is so complex and so useful with all these diseases are related to them. What can we do? And people are trying to figure out whether we can use this information to help our fight against disease, to help us for better living. Of course we can. Then what we do? We read out the gene book. This is a long job. As I said, there are three billion bases or three billion sequences to read. But we do have technology developed for this. And by reading out the each nucleotide, 
in your gene or on the sequence. And then we compare the sequence to the standard reference, or let's say the normal sequence, normal gene. We can find out for an individual, what's wrong with this individual, or what's wrong with this gene. The way of using gene technology to do this identification of abnormality in our genome has been coming to light about like eight years ago. We see here the picture, that's a happy family with two young adults with their parents. They seemed healthy and happy, but it wasn't like this when they were babies. Why? Because those are uh, a pair of twins, a boy and a girl. Boy is, uh, I think is uh, Alex. Uh, so they were born, seemed normal, but when they were very young babies, they have been experiencing a lot of problems with their neural systems. They always have vomiting, nausea, and they couldn't balance well with their bodies. So why? What's wrong with them? For years, the doctors couldn't find out why. And it was about like eight years ago, I think it was Baylor Human Genome Sequencing Center. They used the sequencing technology to find out that there is one single gene mutation in their genome or in their body. That caused the problem with their neural system. And this is the first time people using gene technologies to figure out or diagnose a rare disease. And they use this to help with the treatment. Uh, after they found out the problem with the neural system, the doctors changed their drugs, and then they live happily after. That's, that is why you see this happy photo here, otherwise you won't. So we have been doing this, the, the similar thing, and we also experienced or come into some rare diseases. Uh, this is a disease that is so rare uh, which I, I won't even be able to pronounce the name. We'll just call it SEMD. This is a disease that is related to skeletal and muscle development. And the disease is so rare, it's only about a dozen people have been reported in the whole world. It's so rare, normally doctors couldn't uh, encounter this kind of disease and they don't know the, about this disease. We have come into this situation or this case because one day a mother came to me with a baby in her hand, with a baby in her arm, that she told me what was wrong with my baby because they have been to so many doctors. Uh, the baby was about four years old, but she only had the size of a nine month old and had so many problems with her joints and with her heart. She asked me whether we can find out what's wrong with the baby, why the baby was developing so slow. And because looking at her eyes with the deepest concern and sort of, I, I felt like I should do something. I should try to find out using the gene technology we have been developing. And indeed, we took this job, and it was a very challenging job. As I said before, there are about three billion bases in human genome. And if we try to find out one single base difference, one out of three billion, it's very difficult. But we have been done this. And we use our gene sequencing technology to figure out, to scan all the possible genes that could be related to the disease. And we found out there is one single mutation or there is one single, um, let's say, abnormality for this genome or for this baby. And this is in this gene, which is b 3 got 6 This one single mutation caused the problems with the development of the skeletal or the muscle or all the kinds of problems the baby has been experiencing. So the parents told me, finally, we know what's wrong with the baby. Then she was also concerned. Do we have the problem? Are we fine? If we are going to have more babies, are we going to be okay? 
we did a screening for the whole family, the baby, the parents, and we found out the parents are fine. So the single mutation for the baby, it became a random incident. So the mother and the father was kind of relieved, and they can focus on helping the baby to recover. But for me, I was still a little upset. Why? Because even if we can figure out what's wrong with the baby, what's wrong with the genome, what else can we do? And can we do more? Can we find out whether we can have ways to help the baby or help, help more people for this kind of disease? Since the genome, as I talked before, we have so many differences in genome, and most of them are related to disease. Complicated diseases such as cancer or cardiovascular disease, they are related to many, many genes. And it was proposed a few years back that a concept called precision medicine or personalized medicine. Why? Because each individual, like you and me, we are different genetically. And if we use the information for the gene, from the gene information, we might be able to find the best way to treat each individual differently, and we might find the best way to treat each patient. Because our genes are different, so the response to drugs are different. And the precision medicine or the personalized medicine is we have patients and we try to figure out with gene technologies what's really different at the molecular level, at the gene level. And if you find out the difference, maybe we can treat them with different drugs or different treatments. This method have been using for treating diseases uh, such as cancer or cardiovascular disease for the last few years. And with the technology development, we have more drugs that are specifically targeted to different genes. In this way, if the drug is targeting one particular gene, then you won't have as much as side effects as the chemical drugs we used before. By using this method, we have been doing this practice for treating cancer patients. One example is a 58-year-old man. He was diagnosed with lung cancer, uh, I think about three years back. And when they tried to figure out how to treat Mr. Wu, they had problems. There are many genes that they are figured out with drugs because there is no abnormality. So we couldn't use for him. But there is one particular gene defect. This is called arc fusion. This defect particularly has a drug. It's called chrysotini. This new drug, targeted drug, that can be used for Mr. Wu. And indeed, we use this drug on Mr. Wu. And we see before, during, after, because the drug is a targeted drug, and he can live his normal life, and he can endure the whole process without much interference with his normal life. And this is the way we are using precision medicine or personalized medicine to help people in the fight against disease. A concept came to us, whether we can do more, we can treat each different patient, but whether we can use gene information or gene technology to figure out new treatment or new drugs that we can help more people, not just like Mr. Wu. So for the last few years, my colleagues and I, we have been doing one thing. We have been trying to search for new drug or new use for the drug, new application for the drug uh, that can be used for complicated disease like uh, cancer. This is one example. A child, a five-year-old child that has a uh, metastatic neuroblastoma in the words we can understand, brain tumor. The child has brain tumor and the, which lacks very effective uh, therapeutic treatment or lacks drugs to treat it well. But the child 
in a blood transfusion was accidentally infected with one parasite uh, infection. And by treating this parasite in infection, the child was given a drug. And uh, surprisingly, the brain tumor, it was before and after. After giving the drug, the brain tumor shrunk. And uh, we found this incident, and it was, we were trying to figure out why. And we did use gene information to figure out and try to find the mechanism. During that process, we indeed found a very unique way that this drug, which was used to, for other purpose, that can be used to treat brain tumor. And later on, we did a lot more experiments and figured out the drug can be also effective on other diseases, other cancers, like liver cancer, kidney cancer. And we have been doing this for a few years, and we have been getting the drugs in clinic uh, tests. And hopefully, in the near future, we can put this drug on the market, which in turn can help more people, and can help more people with different diseases like cancer or other diseases. So this is the way we are thinking. If we try to use the gene technology or gene information to figure out new ways to help people in the fight against disease, we might be able to generate more and more use for our drugs or try to find more drugs for different or various diseases. And using gene technology as a precise and effective tool for disease diagnosis or disease treatment has been kind of in a uh, normal way in our practice in the last few years. And in doing so, we have been achieving more and more great results. And I believe the use of gene technologies in the near future will help us better understand the disease and also help us to provide uh, better care for patients and also even prevent other more diseases. In a way, I believe technology can change our lives and also the way of our living. Thank you.